hey Kyle, you think maybe you could wrap this up in like the next 20 minutes? We just need to become a little bit more efficient about things. Oh hey, I'm Noah Thomas. And this is The Review. Very special episode. Obviously we've got ball boys. We also have snob talk. And our third segment is a very special interview with Sir. I gotta pee. Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome to Ball Boys. I'm Ian Cervantes. I'm Kyle Hodge. Uh, apologies if my voice is more annoying than normal. I'm a little sick, but the wheels of capitalism have to keep on churning. Gotta keep going. So with that, let's get this content. I've been trying to talk about the Mellow 1.5s like all year. This week, I just narrowed down the topics so small. We have to, like they have to include have it. have to. So Mellow has been bringing back the 1.5, feeling a little nostalgic been rocking hella different colorways. Last week, to make it topical, he rocked this multi-colorway. What are your thoughts? I think they're dope. Uh, I've always been a fan of the Mellow 1.5s, uh, and I think these are really cool. Um, definitely a clash of like crazy colors with the black and white. I think it's dope. Mellow's been, he's been, he's been cooking it up. New colorways, old school. I'm loving them, I'm loving them. Keep the retros coming. So this month is Women's History Month, and one basketball team, the LA Clippers, are celebrating in a very unusual way. They partnered with the dating app Bumble uh, for an advertisement on their jersey. For them, it's more than just an advertisement. Mm. It is a badge of empowerment to represent equality for, for women. I'm all for the message of <laughs> of you know of equality and representing women and ce celebrating women, but all right, let's just call it what it is. This is capitalism. They gave them money. They gave them landscape on their jerseys. Mm -hmm. No other team is coming up with this convoluted bullshit. No. I mean, the best patch in the league is obviously the Milwaukee Bucks with the Harley Davidson patch. Oh, because badass. A, Harley Davidson's dope. B, it's actually from the state. So there is a, a meaningful relationship here. But let's, yeah, let's not, let's not overdo it, yeah. dude. Just take the check and run. Call it for what it is. And to make things worse, they also put out these awkward uh, promotions using Ayn Rand, Maya Angelou, and Anne oh, Frank God. to promote the whole thing. Please stop. Yeah, they deleted that quickly. Please stop. Again, like, stop trying to make it deeper than rap. Like, that's, <laughs> that's all this is. All right, and then to close things out, we've got Adidas rolling out a grip of emoji cleats. Um, it's the Audi Zero 5 Star 7.0, which just dropped yesterday when you see this for a cool 130. Mm -hmm. Not bad. Not bad. That's, yeah. um, they've got a grip of different options. We got money, the flying money, we got the flames, we got the goat. Messi will probably be wearing those. We got snowflakes, we got money bags. I mean, this is just dripping, right? It's dripping. Uh, I really like it. I, you know, when I first heard about it, uh, anything with emoji could easily be cheesy, but I think the themes behind these and the colorways are very dope. So that's it from us at Ball Boys. Tell us what you think about everything we talked about today. Um, yeah, that's it from us. Thanks for watching. Peace. I'm gonna hit that Robitussin. Hey. What's good? This is Noah from High Snob. This is Snob Talk. Today we have Sherry Camacho, one third of Ting and Ting, and Nikki Martinez from The Janes. All right, first question. So, DIY fashion campaigns like Yeezy and with Balenciaga doing the, you know, kind of paparazzi campaign, is that kind of killing the magic? No, I think that Instagram killed the magic um, years ago, and I think that what Balenciaga and Yeezy are doing now is actually inspiring to young designers that don't have major budgets and they, they're like, hey, maybe I just don't need that to produce what I want, I don't know. What do you think uh, Instagram did that killed the magic? Um, the, so the, the obsession, I guess like with the whole, pop, playing on the whole paparazzi thing, I guess that's a different conversation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a longer answer. What do you think? <laughs> oh, I think it's great. I think it's a great thing that they're doing that. I feel like you don't need a whole crazy production to show you're, what you're expressing, essentially. Yeah, so it's kind of passe to do the big budget, kind of like big Dior, crazy magical. True. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got you. All right, next question. So, uh, Wardrobe NYC is Christine Centenera's new project. And, uh, you know, for Yeezy season six, I believe, you had to buy the full outfit to get the 500s. Uh, do you think it's kind of weak, or is it dope to have to buy a full look? 
I'm, I don't think it's weak or dope, but I just don't think it's something people want to do. Yeah. Like, do you go into a store and buy your whole outfit there? No. Like, yeah. you probably buy one or two things. Um, and I probably, I mean, I don't think it'll be that successful for, like, the strategy, I guess. But, I mean, I guess it's a, a interesting test. I don't know. Yeah, like, is that sad that people can't think for themselves, you think? Um, I don't think it's sad. I, I actually think that what Christine is doing with wardrobe is actually really exciting and for me someone that wants to just get away from logos and like all that kind of stuff and I just want to be lazy maybe buying a, a what is it five yeah. outfits yeah it's like four or eight okay I'm, I'm down for that but with easy I think that's weak yeah yeah, yeah. got you all right so uh, the women's street we're seeing do you think it's strong right now with uh, Nike Unlaced and uh, Jordan women's dropping you know sick it will, I'd say, better colorways and things like that. You think it's getting stronger or there's still way more to be done? I don't think it's any stronger, in my opinion. I do buy shoes and I wear them. Like, I don't save them, but I don't feel like the shoes they're making for women are things women want to wear. Mm, so they're not touching uh, the market that women want? Uh, they aren't. I think that there's a lot of work to do. Um, I. Finally, it's 2018 and they finally see us and they finally appreciate us and they finally understand that women do love streetwear. Um, but I think that also selling me pink shoes all the time doesn't work for me. Like I really, you just want what we get, right? I, yes. Yeah, the OGs. I don't want it a small that's like tailored for a woman's body. I want the men's small. I don't know if that makes sense. Same. Got you. <laughs> Snob talk. Peace. <laughs> okay, my name is Sir. I'm from Inglewood, California. Representing TDE today. It's that fire, that's a lot, it'll burn slow. I feel like my music is just a part of who I am as a person. Growing up where I grew up kind of made me the man I am today. I had positive role models around me at all times, and uh, I try to be as positive as possible because of the people that are looking back at me and, you know what I mean, have done so much to put me in this position. It keeps me grounded, you know what I mean, and keeps me focused on making sure that I keep positivity first. Falling apart something. I never thought I'd be doing this. Honestly, my parents used to make us do music, so when I turned 17, I stopped doing music altogether. And I grew up in a church, so I totally like shifted gears. I stumbled into this, you know what I mean? I was an engineer when I first started out, and I had no intention of becoming an artist. I really didn't. And still to this day, it's like a weird place to be. I love doing music, I love what I do, and I'm blessed to be in a position I'm in, but I could give a fuck less about being an artist or a star or any of that. I just want to be at the house and you know what I mean? Work on music. You'd be surprised. I'm not the singer in my family. My brothers, my mother sings, you know what I mean? And they sing at a very high level. The people in church that, you know, are in charge of, you know, putting the music together, they're not just in charge of like playing the songs and stuff like that. They're in charge of evoking emotion, creating the atmosphere for church. And in church, it's a strong, intense atmosphere when it's done right. Some of my influences from my early life would be like Music Soul Child, Usher, R. Kelly, you know what I mean? All the R&B that they were doing when I was younger, I still like listen to certain songs and just, I'm blown away. Music Soul Child's first album just resonates so much with me as a human being. I use those cats to kind of mold me as an artist. November, it's like a journey. I'm kind of creating this parallel universe where I'm taking a trip to a place called November. And I have my guide that's kind of walking me along the way and telling me where we're at and, you know, what we need and stuff like that. And the songs kind of just represent where I was in my life going along this journey. But um, November is a special month to me. I was born in November and I've had some really memorable relationship uh, issues go down in November. And just, um, yeah, it's a special month for me. Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday. I get to spend most of my time with my friends and family and shit like that. So um, I felt like it fit, you know, the time and it fit um, the timing for me and uh, yeah hopefully it all translates I think a lot of people are probably expecting me to have a whole bunch of like features from other artists uh, on the label and it's not that you know what I mean I definitely wanted it to stand on its own I got the Q feature and you know it did well and all but I definitely want the album to you know just do its thing, you know what I mean? I want people to listen to the music and enjoy it. I, I don't really have expectations for this one. It's already done. In my head, I let go of it. I'm working on some other shit now.
What's up, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Sir. I'm from Inglewood, California. I'm representing Top Dog Entertainment. Uh, I just want to thank High Snobody for having me, man. Um, my album November is out now, so go ahead and check it out.